to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. My name is Legion and today I'll be taking you through how we do 3D painting in Blender. Now this obviously will be able to import directly into your flight sim, which I've got here. So let me just show you what our aim is to create today. So I've already gone through and made this one today. However, we will be going through and recreating similar uh, of this one. Now you can see here that I've placed the tail of course some writing on the fuselage as well as an icon now this icon actually matches on both sides so i'll teach you how to do mirroring as well and of course we'll get their aircraft into your game so the first thing we want to do in blender now the add-ons that you will require are in the description of this video please go and install them otherwise this method will not work so we want to go up to file i'm going to go new general i'm not going to save that one it's going to highlight all this, left click and drag for this box, select all of this and then just hit delete. Okay, once we've done that, we want to go file, import, after you've activated the plugin, you'll see MSFS GLTF add-on here. We just want to open that up. That will bring us to this file manager. We want to then find our app data folder or wherever your install location is where you would normally find your packages folder. So for me, it's app data roaming, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then of course packages. Go into here, select official. For me, it's Steam. Yours may be different, depending on of course the version of the game. Now I'm just gonna try and find the CJ4 here somewhere. There it is. And we go open that, sim objects, airplanes, a Sobo CJ4, and we just wanna open the model file. Now you can see here there's a bunch of LOD, double zero, one, two, and so on. Now these are based on distance. So of course, if I were to load LOD six, it's a much uh, lower texture of the model. And from a further distance, of course, it will not really look the way it's meant to. And now you've got cockpit and some also have an interior in here. You just wanna make sure it's just the aircraft name and then LOD. Now the lowest one we have here is double zero, which is the one we want to open. So I'm just gonna double click that and that opens like so. Now, of course, you can see that it has spawned one of these models, uh, un unshaped, essentially, uh, where it definitely shouldn't be. So we can just click on that and hit delete on our keyboard. Okay, so that leaves us with the fuselage and the tail and so on. We even got a wheel down here. All right, so simply left click on the model. Now you can see here we've got the fuselage selected straight away. And then what we want to do now, as you can see here, the rudder and the tail part isn't here. So we want to go up to the search bar here, select or type in rudder like so. The one we're after today will be the rudder uh, trim and then should be the rudder as well. So you hold control, click on them and then we press on the trim again and rudder you should be able to do shift H. Oops. Shift H, there we go. All right, so now you can see here we've got the base model of the aircraft without all the decals and extra stuff sort of laying around, which is great for what we're doing. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is with our rudder, because it's not in place, we want to reposition it. So we're gonna see here, uh, we need actually the trim rudder, which is fine, I believe. It's a rudder one. Rudder one is the one we're after. Okay, so we got rudder and rudder one. The trim and rudder one, should I say? I'm just gonna hold control, select them. Press G on our keyboard, which will allow you to move them like so. Oops. Okay, so let's move them to there. As you can see, currently they're inside one another. So we just want to select the rudder trim. I'm just going to press G just to bring it out a little bit and just left click or enter to unselect it. Okay, so this part is the tricky part. We just want to simply line these two up to begin with because they will need to be together. Uh, so let's just get this sorted. Keep this on a fair rotation. We just wanna get that pretty much lined up the best we can. The better you get this lined up and the more time you spend on it means the, uh, the less editing in Photoshop you'll have to do at the end of this. Or GIMP if you're using that. Okay, so simply drag those two out like so. I want to highlight them then. We simply want to hit the X up here to line us up with the side of the aircraft. Then we can press R. Now, once you press R, you can rotate with your mouse. 
So obviously I need to rotate this sort of back a little bit. So an angle probably to about there. And it's simply drag it up and then place it across into here. And just like I said before, get this as close as possible as you can. You might need to rotate it again, just hit R again. And then of course, just line it up the best you can. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you get it right, it will save you a lot of time in the end. Okay, so we've got that there. As you can see, it hasn't exactly lined it up for us. I'm just gonna hit Y, so I'm facing the back of the aircraft this time. We're gonna make sure we have both of these selected, like so. I'm just gonna drag that across into the center of the aircraft, like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. For the next part, we're gonna select the fuselage. Once we've done that, we can simply click on the spanner and tool up here, like so. Now, what we want to do first, just so we can get the UV layout, we want to go up here next to options, and you'll notice your mouse changes color when you reach this curve on the top. So left click and drag off to the left hand side. Like so. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm going to change this one over here. We're going to click on this little box on the grid ball on the grid should I say and we're going to change this one to UV editor now this will show us our UV layers of course it's not showing anything at the moment because we're not in anything so we simply want to hit tab on our keyboard on the right hand screen this will put us in edit mode otherwise you can go up here and select edit mode now you'll notice it's put a bunch of these black random dots on our aircraft so I'm just going to clear my rudder search off and we're going to scroll through here till we find fuselage in this case open up the tree and we'll select fuselage now we can simply go down here to the material properties just want to go select now you can see straight away that it has added in here for us some things that we need okay so now that we've got that there too we also want to scroll down here and find our rudder in this case and we just want to do the same with that so we can hold control because we're adding to it just control click and select same for everything else that's here. Like so. Now you can see they're selected. Okay. So you can see now once I've hit select, sometimes you do have to click off it and reselect it to get it all to work properly. We're going to simply select fuselage now. And you'll notice on the right here, we've got the whole fuselage, the tail, and then of course those extra bits that we had to add into there. Okay. So once we're done that it's now time to add in the debase texture for this so you simply want to click where it says edit mode and change this to texture paint now you'll notice that this does get rid of some of the uv layer which is fine because we will be doing some different stuff from here on so i'm actually going to start by painting the fuselage which means that we'll go up here and click x in the icon to put us directly on the side i suggest you probably zoom in just a little bit too much uh, once you've done that, we'll go back up in our list here. You just want to find fuselage and have that selected. Okay, so quickly jump back into object mode, click that to highlight it, and then go back into texture. And you'll notice it's now swapped the bit that we're working with, which is perfect. Okay, so now we click the screwdriver and spanner again, which brings up this window here. Now we're already in texture paint, you wanna make sure you're in that, otherwise this will look completely different. So what we're gonna do here first is add a new texture and we're gonna select base color. Now this says here, fuselage base color, which is our name, and it's currently 1024 pixels by 1024. We just wanna simply times this by whatever we're doing. So if it was 2K, it'd be asterisk and then two. In my case, I'm going for a 4K livery. So I'm gonna go asterisk and then four. Same for this one down here, add asterisks and four to the end of that, and that will times the width and height by four. Now the color is what you want the base of the aircraft to be colored. So in this case, I want it white. So I'll drag this up to do like so. Simply hit OK. And you'll notice straight away, the main body has all changed to white, including, of course, the tail. OK, so now that we've done that, we can scroll down here to where it says texture. And we want to go and add a new texture so we can simply click add texture like so and in this case i'm going to name this logo because that's what we'll be putting in with this mapping we want to change to stencil which 
obviously at this stage won't show anything here, but if you had a logo set up, which I'll show you how to do in just a sec, it would appear on this screen. So we're simply going to click the world icon here to get to material properties now. We just want to double check that it's got fuselage selected here and then go down just underneath the world icon and hit this button here, the little grid looking one. Okay, so you can see here it's picked up a logo as the texture that we're working with. Currently preview is just black because we haven't actually opened anything. So I'm going to click open here on my file. If you've already linked yours in here, you can simply click left and select it from the nodes and it will bring up this window. Now I've saved my files today in downloads. So I'm going to grab these here and we'll actually just use the black logo. So I'm going to go open image. That's going to put that in there. Of course, it's not going to show much at the moment because it, of course it's black, which is fine. And then we're just going to click back up here on our screwdriver and spanner again and scroll down a little bit. Now you can see that has straight away updated this logo here. And if I hover over, it does appear, but it's a little bit out of shape. So we're just going to simply click image aspect. So select that and you'll notice it resizes. Now, what we want to do here is hold shift and right click. Left and right drag will, of course, scale this for us. So I'm going to scale it down to about there for now. And then if we let go of shift and just right click, it allows us to move it around so we can place it wherever we like. So, as I mentioned before, I'm not actually going through and creating this livery to real life expectations for now. It, this is just to show you how to do it properly. So we're going to hold shift again, resize it a little bit more down to there. And I want to put this bird on the front windows. Now, this is one of the things I mentioned before about mirroring. Okay, so with mirroring, it does make it quite easy for logos such as like this, but if you do it with text, it will appear back to front on the opposite side. However, I'll show you something with that as well. So what we want to do down here is go to symmetry. And then you'll see here it says mirror X, Y, Z. We want to go with X because that will keep it on the same layer here, just on the opposite side. So once we've done that, we can simply click on our image here. Now, of course, the circle is our brush size. You can adjust that up here where it says radius. I'm going to put this down to about 20-ish. So that does that. I simply go here. I'm just going to highlight, hold left click and go in circles around it a few times to make sure it's all painted. Now, if I go up here into my little uh, preview uh, viewpoint and hit X again, swaps us to the other side and you can see it's automatically painted that on there. If you actually have a look, if we go up here on our left side and click the photo and we select base color, this is what we're currently working with. You'll notice it's actually put it on the DDS files for us already. So when we were to export this, for example, it would mean that you no longer have to place it in Photoshop and things like that. So if you're making a straight line, uh, of course, you just make a straight line texture and then put it straight onto the aircraft. It's that simple. Uh, it's definitely much easier doing it this way than it is to try and follow these UV grids uh, to get that out there. Okay, so now I want to put the text onto the aircraft. So I'm going to line it up with this little pink line that's on the aircraft already on this side. And I'm just going to paint in this whole area here like so. And you'll notice the moment I let go of the left click here, it's painted it on to this here. Now you can see I messed up and I left the symmetry on. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo. Make sure I untick this this time. And we're just going to do that again, like so. And that will only now paint the one side for us, which is what we're after. Now you can see here it's added that there and it the texture has split in an area here, but it's worked that out and placed it in the correct spot for us. So now I'm going to hit X again, to take us over the other side. And I'm going to reline this up. Just want to make sure that we're uh, at the right height. So it looks like the, the N sort of just finishes just under the window, which in this case will be the U. And it looks about right. So we're going to leave it at that height, just drag it across slightly, left click, paint, drag that across like so. You see that? That's added in there as well now. Now for the hardest part being the tail. Now, no doubt if you've uh, designed liveries in this lovely game before, you'd know that this is the hardest part of making delivery is getting this bloody tail right. So we're simply going to scroll down now. Well, actually first, if 
before we do that, we want to make sure that we, because this is part of the fuselage, well, it's all the files are part of the fuselage, but because it's a different segment, we want to make sure that we're still on this one and we just want to paint that f initial part. And of course, make sure you turn the mirroring on for the tail if you're using a logo, just so you don't have to flip it over and do the opposite side manually. Okay, so now that I've done that, we simply want to scroll down to our next selection, find our rudder in here. Oops. So you can see there it's highlighted that in orange. I'm just gonna click the fuselage layer. So that will now allow me to paint onto here, like so. We just wanna simply go back to object mode, make sure that that's selected, select fuselage. And then of course, go to edit, which brings up the grid for us. Go down to the world and we just want to go select so that stays selected okay now we can click up here on edit mode again go to texture paint and now that's got that as the active texture so i can simply now paint on that as you can see if i let go straight away it's updated both sides of that up here now you'll notice here that the uv grid is on there if you were to save this as it is now it would actually save with the uv grid so we simply want to go back from texture paint to edit mode, go down to the world icon if you're not already here and hit deselect. You'll notice it disappears, which is perfect. Now on this window, we can just click off the model, go to object mode, off the model, and that's there like so. Now in this mode, you won't see the painting. So what we're gonna do here is go up to image on the top left-hand side here, image, and we're gonna go save. That's going to pop up with this window here. Now I do have one in here for Lufthansa already, so I'm going to replace that. So we go save image, like so. It's going to go ahead and save that for us. So now I'm going to open up Photoshop. Now at this point, this is where you would go through your uh, template folder. Go to sim objects, airplanes, find your uh, aircraft, find your texture. And you just want to go in here and we're doing the uh, fuselage. So you would open this file, which will bring you to here. I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to default, like so. And then, of course, we go into our file manager. So I'm just going to do that on my other screen here. Okay. So I'm going to go documents. Now I'm going to grab, actually, I'll bring this on the screen. I'm going to grab this item just here and we're going to drag that straight over the top, like so. And you can see it's automatically sized that to the window, which is currently 2048 by 2048. If you've done a 4K texture like I had, uh, you just want to, of course, resize this DDS before bringing this in. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'll delete the one we just put in. If you press Control Alt I, this window pops up here. So we go, uh, was it 4096? So 4096 by 4096, like so, and here, okay. Now, as you can see here, it might give me an error because my game is currently open, so it's chewing through all of my RAM, all 32 gig of it, surprisingly, and we just want to drag this back in here, like so. And you can see straight away, let's put it back to what it needs to be. Now, if I press Control Shift S to save this, we just want to go down here, Select DDS. If you don't have DDS in your editing list, uh, the link for the installer for that will also be in the description. So, let's select Fuselage here. Hit Save. Yep, we want to replace it. It's going to go through this. We're going to hit Save again. We go back to our sim, like so. I'm just going to shoot around the side here. So, you can see this is the before one that I did. And if I simply go down to Liveries here and re click on here, if your camera changes, make sure you have developer mode on and whatnot, and go from there. Now you can see here that this is all updated to match what we just did. If I go and check the tail, it's practically perfectly aligned. So let me just show you a couple of things that we've noticed. Uh, people have some issues with at times. So if your texture is appearing silver, uh, so the image is showing, but it's not picking up things correctly, you want to go into your texture.cfg and this top line here, you want to make sure that it's dot dot slash dot dot slash, then the aircraft name, and then slash texture, like so. If it's not like that, it will not work properly. Okay.
but uh, with most of the templates that we've got now active, you will be able to use them uh, automatically because we have actually gone through and altered all those settings to work. So we go to aircraft, CFG, make sure that you configure this. So by default, this part on all of these areas will say template, go ahead and update that to whatever uh, you need to. Of course, for the texture, this is based off whatever your texture folder here is called. Of course, remove the texture dot and just whatever it is after is what goes in your texture section of the CFG. Okay, so last part of this is to go to your layout file. By default, this section here will say template. And obviously you can see where it highlights everything else. Now, if you want this uh, code editor, it is free from Microsoft. It's Visual Studio Code. It makes things like this super easy to do um, and can also help you to find an error in your code if it is indeed failing. Okay. So once you go ahead and update that to your needs, you can go into manifest and of course, set your own credits, the title of the aircraft, manufacturer and so on. Once you've done that, you're practically right to go with the game and get on with your design. So if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and comment below if I can help you any further. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next video.